The Audi S4 Twin Turbo Giveaway is ending this Wednesday. Click the link in the description to enter to win this technological marvel. So, how about something technologically unremarkable? Nissan D40. Bill Murray said in Groundhog Day, maybe God isn't omnipotent. Maybe he's just been around so long he knows everything. Maybe a Nissan Frontier isn't a divine design. Maybe it's just been in production so long that forums have solved every problem. The D40 model was in production in the United States from 2004 to 2021. Once again, from 2004 to 2021. And for that entire time, it was the truck you were upgraded to at Enterprise, at MDT, or CVG. Yes, now I only refer to airports by their airport code. Oh, hello. I'm upgrading you to a premium vehicle for no extra charge because we're all out of budget vehicles. So you're all jonesing for a Malibu or maybe a V6 Mustang, something either mildly comfortable or mildly interesting. But no, it's a Nissan Frontier, a truck that drives and sounds just like a Nissan Altima. Nissan Frontier, the car for you if your favorite part of a gaming podcast is where the hosts giggle at their own jokes. Nissan Frontier. The truck for you if your favorite part of a gaming podcast is when the hosts sing Nintendo music. If your favorite part is when they describe memes. If your favorite part is where they tell inside jokes that have nothing to do with the podcast narrative. If your favorite part is where they pretend to have sponsors. Nissan Frontier. Brought to you by having a filibuster all ready to go if someone says the word Toyota. Ah! Nissan Frontier. I see you couldn't afford a Tacoma. Oh, I'm gonna be tough. Tough in my Nissan Frontier. I'm gonna get push bar. I'm gonna get bull bar. I'm gonna get inappropriate erections. Yeah, just like the big trucks. Except this push bar weighs over 200 pounds and it's hanging off the front of the frame in front of the bumper. So you got all that weight hanging off the front of the truck, so Alan had to get a leveling kit so his truck stopped drooping. He did mention that with the bull bar on, fewer people cut in front of him on 276. But be careful. Bull bars are gateway accessories. They can lead to, one, Punisher logos with blue lines in them, number two, Rewatching the Bruce Willis remake of Death Wish. Number three, poor muzzle discipline. Number four, using paper maps. Number five, stealing toilet paper from diner bathrooms. Number six, reduced ambiguity processing. Number seven, number seven tattoos. Number eight, look at my dick. Number nine, vehemently loving cream chip beef on toast. Number 10, stop looking at my dick. Number 11, secretly watching the movie Beefcake. Number 12, watching Hoffman's home movies. And number 13, farting in the sauna. God, this truck's boring. It drives like a rental Altima. I keep coming back to that. Nissan Frontier. If Tuesday was a truck. People remember Mondays because Monday sucks. They'll remember Wednesday because it's hump day. 
and Thursday because it's almost Friday. You might remember Tuesday if you're lucky enough to have taco meat on hand, but on an average week with nothing else going on, Tuesday is the most forgettable day. It's just a day, and the Nissan Frontier is just a truck. The truck struggles to warrant discussion in any real sense, not because it's a bad truck, but because there's nothing about it that compels your memory. But even the most unexciting creations have a history. The D-22 Frontier originally hit North America in 1997 as a replacement for the D-21 hardbody, hence the name D-22 Frontier. At least until the 2005 model year, where the second generation was introduced as the D-40 Frontier, known internationally as the Nissan Navara. Both generations were virtually identical to the model offered in international markets, such that it didn't get its own standalone model until just last year when the D41 was introduced for the 2022 model year. The Frontier was here to compete with the Toyota Tacoma and Chevy Colorado. It couldn't really compete with the Tacoma, so it competed on price. As for the Chevy Colorado, well, it's just another fleet truck. This is the second generation model offering a 4-liter dual overhead cam V6 making 261 horsepower and 281 pound-feet of torque matched to a 5-speed automatic transmission with shift-on-the-fly four-wheel drive. These little dials right here, yeah, you can shift it to four-wheel drive anytime you want, but these aren't the lever ones. If the parameters are incorrect, like if you, if you have too much steering angle or if you're over 60 miles an hour, or if you're at a weird angle, it won't give you four-wheel drive. It'll ask for four-wheel drive from the transfer case. You also get four-wheel disc brakes with ABS and a two-speed transfer case with high and low settings. As to put it in four-wheel drive low, you have to be in neutral and pretty much stopped at that point. The shift switch feature has to be engaged at speeds below 60 miles an hour, but it lets you adjust based on your terrain. Two-wheel drive or drive paid roads and four-wheel drive high mode for rough, sandy, or snow-covered roads. If you put it in four-wheel drive high, and this is not really unique to the Frontier, it's unique to my uh, forerunner and most, you know, four-wheel drive vehicles, your turning radius is really affected when you're in four-wheel drive high. Oh, you can try to make a tighter turn, but the car will tell you that it doesn't like it. Four-wheel drive low, especially on light-duty trucks, is kind of inessential like another version of Skyrim. Yeah, Skyrim is great, but how many versions of Skyrim do we need? I'll tell you what we do need, more Lucifer. The add-on, the fully voiced Argonian follower that comments on most of your quests. More of this, more of this, please download this mod. I'm not getting paid to do this, I just like it so much. And he speaks in an adorable British accent, oh. Now, Alan would use his Frontier to tow boats, so sometimes the back wheels ended up getting dunked in the water like a principal at a school fundraiser. And so the ABS ring and the UV joint on the drive shaft would occasionally go wonky from being dunked like that. And really, if you're going to be this unspectacular, you should at least be consistently reliable. But what we could find the most reliable years for the Nissan Frontier on the used market are the 2013 model year and the 2014 model year. All years, it should be a great truck. And I suppose if you're looking for something straightforward and bare bones, then this should get the job done. But it's also the type of truck that brings with it a cascade of groaning whenever something breaks down. Not a, not a Toyota, is it? It's the automotive equivalent of a coworker who says, oh good, I was hoping I'd run into you just as you're getting ready to leave for the day. You know the other end of that statement is going to be a withdrawal on your friendship capital. Oh good, I was hoping I'd run into you, and you still have your tool belt on. Great. For what it's worth, Alan made sure the truck is decently outfitted in every other regard. It has a new hood and a new windshield, owing to the mishap you saw at the start of the video. It has fog lights and an accompanying switch, since they didn't come factory. In addition to steering wheel controls, he also added a projector headlight conversion, since Alan states the stock ones are trash. And it seems like it's been a useful addition more so than not. It's a truck that requires modification to satisfy contemporary demands. Which is strange because 2009 wasn't really long ago. It wasn't really long, that long ago, right? It was 13 years ago. Huh. But it's a truck that still should be good enough not to feel out of place in 2022. But its lack of embellishment encourages experimentation the addition of grit. It's like the story about Mr. Rogers being a sniper in the military who killed a bunch of enemy combatants. 
It's not true, but because we can't wrap our heads around the concept of a virtuous person, we need to give some edge to the characterization to be able to say, well, yeah, he's a good guy, but he has skeletons. You ever see Road to Perdition? The movie billed itself on getting to see Tom Hanks play a bad guy, but he's not the, really the villain of the movie. I guess there's something about adding a bit of grit to something that generates positive attention. Because something having a bit of edge to it supposedly adds character when the opposite is true. It can feel forced and strip away some of the authenticity of the experience. This has a bull bar. Was it factory? No, Alan added it himself, and he'll be the first to tell you it was a mistake. Alan was younger when he added it, and he assumed he'd go off-roading sometime. Sometime. As we all do. But he only ever went once. No judgments, of course. We've all been there. I owned a DR650 dual sport, thinking I'd go off-roading all the time. I went maybe twice. We've all been there. It's desire being outrun by reality. But that's the thing with a blank slate truck like this. You may want to add things to it, but adding things the truck doesn't need can only do so much. It won't really add a layer of exceptionalism to it. No matter how much dirt you do get on this thing, it's still a Nissan Frontier. And it's due back to Hertz in eight hours. My number one fear with another frontier is to drive it one year and be going uphill but there's only one gear but the future's unclear someone pour me one beer as I'm shedding one tear like the only one here.